Hi there. My name is Abdal Imam. I've been in the product design industry for over 15 years. I've been a product designer, also experienced strategist. I'm also the author of the design container available now on Amazon. Please check it out. Also build and co-founded two startups myself. And right now I lead and co-founded IndiePixels Venture Studio, where we build our ideas, but also uh, help consult and advise, as well as invest in startup that they are building product and software for enterprise and SaaS with a focus on AI. And I will share about that later in the video. But without further ado, I was invited recently to a talk at UC Berkeley Extensions in the San Francisco Design Week. It was a pleasure and an honor to give the talk and lead a discussion about designing for machine learning, as well as UX in, the, in an AI word. It's quite interesting and funny that um, Will Smith eating spaghetti became the benchmark of how we measure the improvement of machine learning model and AI model nowadays. So in 2023, uh, two years ago, the videos that we have seen, it was really cringe, I would say. Uh, but now in 2025, you will see the videos are way ahead of everything that we have seen before, very accurate, as well as um, really reflect how much improvement happened to machine learning and AI model. Not only that, of course, OpenAI are leading the way for the tools to adapt AI into futures, into their software and experiences. Figma, for example, introduced AI features already. Uh, Google, uh, of course, also trying to lead with JGBT by introducing Gemini as well as uh, Google Vio 3 uh, for video production or video generation. But the AI is here and it is happening and it's now embedded in all the tools or almost all the tools that we're using and it will continue to be so. As UX um, is no longer just about interfaces, it's about intelligent behavior and designers and founders now need to think about shaping these experiences, not only how it looks and how it feels, but also how the product itself think. So we're not designing buttons and flows anymore. We are designing decisions. And for us to design decisions, we have to adapt uh, a new approach to our UX design process. Our process, as we think about it, it's always been linear, step by step to get to the end goal. Uh, but it needs to be more adaptive, more uh, probabilistic, adaptive to uh, where we are and, and the probability, probability and optionability of the AI outcome, as well as the dynamic behavior the software and products are heading towards. And of course, we need to adapt our process because also a lot of users often don't understand how decisions are made. And that's a huge issue that is still going to continue for a while until we get the trust of the AI behavior. We need to focus or add into our processes uh, the thinking of feedback loops that are behavior driven experiences and of course evolving outputs or outcomes of these experiences. So we're moving from deterministic one action at a time designs into more probabilistic, more options, more choices for the users to have. And of course, we are also moving from a visible system with normal screens and to oblique logic, oblique logic that we may not, some of the machine learning or the machine models will be in machines that they may not have screens. With that being said, there are a few design principles that we implemented at IndiePixels Venture Studio that I think could be really help shape your experiences. So thinking of explainability as a new design principle that we have to adapt and design for. So helping user understand the why behind the interaction, the why behind the outcome or the deliverable from the AI and machine learning model. Control. So let user guide and override and correct AI, which is really important as we co-pilot the experiences with the users to get them the opportunity to have and feel that they are in control. And another principle that we try and value in our designs is trust. Building the confidence through clarity and consistency, and that hopefully over time build the trust from the user to understand the product, understand the outcomes, and to understand the generation and the probability behavior of the software. Another thing I mentioned earlier too as well is feedback. 
close the loop with meaningful responses. Uh, the loop of the experience, of course, as the user getting responses and interacting with uh, your AI software, you must have ways for the user to get feedback on the interactions or on, on the outcome. Uh, and that will help, of course, improve the model itself and improve the experience overall. Agency, so empower users to co-pilot the experience. As I mentioned earlier, co-piloting, I think it has to be one of the core principles when designing for AI software and product, especially in the beginning or where we are at the moment, to help the user trust and give them the control. So how about the challenges that you may face when designing product and software with AI? challenges that comes up a lot, especially with the startup that we work with and ideas that we build, we tend to think of over automating right away when we start thinking about designing for AI. So that also brings the challenge of taking too much control away from the users. As I mentioned, where we are at the moment, the machine learning models and AI advanced so much. However, uh, they are not at a point that we can still trust them completely. Um, to have old experience or override all our actions for us. And then the second one will be a data bias. So we will have a lot of challenges when related to data biases. Unfortunately, inherited pattern that reflect harmful assumption, uh, machine learning models and AI used by human or built by human. A lot of this biases will be unfortunately inherited by us to the model and then over time could be improved. But something to think about as more of a challenge and also uh, care for when you're designing for your product and software. And then the third challenge is black box behavior. Uh, this is basically the lack of visibility into a system logic, which is usually happen as well. Not only just how the machine learning or the AI model um, predict or or give you the outcome, but, but, but also if there's a problem in the model, there will be hard really to, sometimes there hard, will be hard to know where it is and where it is and how to fix it. Um, and that creates this black box behavior that they may happen or show, uh, and it becomes an issue as you're designing or for the experience for the users. And then another thing I think it's important as we uh, pride ourselves here at the studio to think about that is misaligned goals, optimizing for matrix and forgetting that we're designing software for humans. At the end of the day, software and product design focuses or should focus on user-centered design. And we need not to forget about the human, the people using the software. And we need not to uh, optimize only for the goals that is related to the matrix or basically making money or profit of it. So we have to have a balance between business needs as well as human and user needs. So just remember, just because it's smart doesn't mean it's usable or fair. So what good looks when we're talking about AI for UX? So how to design good UX experiences for AI? We use UX design tools that we know of, four of them specifically to begin with in every idea or product or startup that we work with, and we try to push for. We'll explain a little bit more later about it, but the four are metaphors using visual indicators, confirmations, as well as fallbacks. An example of metaphor will be something that we are familiar with already. We can bring into the experience so we don't have to basically redesigning the wheel. So progressive disclosure of system complexity, that's a pattern that is used constantly in basically onboarding a user to a tool or paying off or going through the paying process and shipping when you're buying something online. This is basically um, practice of revealing information, features or system complexly gradually into smaller steps for the users. A good example for that, I would say, uh, Gemini, you're doing a good job on it. When you land on Gemini chat, uh, you will have a place for you to add your prompts, but also there's a few options for you. It will change in or where you are. Um, in the software, if you're on a slides, for example, or when you're driving for or email, uh, you may have different, uh, a few action or suggested action that you can take. That's considered a good example of progressive disclosure of system complexity that can help your user to get into the experience easier uh, than just being on a text box and doesn't know what to do. Another good example related to the visual cues specifically, confidence levels and uncertainty cues. A good job uh, done by the Notion uh, team here. If you go to Notion, you'll see it even on their website. So visual or textual indicator that shows how certain the AI is about its output. So as, for example, 
notion creating a document for you uh, or generating a document for you it show you how many documents researching which channels or page it's researching and give you an indicator on how long it's going to be as well as what is happening at the moment so you are feeling in control you understand what's going on and that's simply by giving more visual cues as the experience is happening so interactive features that let users guide correct and override ai as i mentioned earlier and a, a good example of that of course will be chat gbt as you add your prompts and you ask a question you'll get the answer but you also get a thumbs down or up about the suggestions, as well as a way for you to edit the suggestion in Canvas. And some of this also edits and some of this interaction that you have with the tool is still gonna be captured and maybe enhance your experience later on as you ask the same questions or different questions. Another good pattern that we really used to it that I think it applies very well here is clear onboarding and mental models. Help user understand how the AI works what to expect and how to interact with it a good example of that is ux uh, pilot uh, tool here it's a, a founded i think and built from a ux professionals no affiliation here uh, but i think it's a good tool and it takes you through an on onboarding process typically uh, designed as we used to design it for years and it just takes you step by step to show you around how you can use the ux pilot tool and it's basically a mock-up generation tool uh, using ai and another good Maybe not a UX design pattern, but it's more of a, a behavior that we should adapt is ethical default. Basically giving the preset options and behavior to the user that they are familiar with, control over privacy, safety, and fairness, and also uh, well-being. And uh, the system act responsibly even if the user don't change any settings. So let's see some examples here in case studies on specific improvement that happened to related to AI software or products in the real world. And none of these affiliated again by us, but it's mostly exist out there and you can out there and find it yourself if you would like to. But for example, Google, when they just released the Gemini first iteration of it, they did have a few, I would say, negative feedback, a lot of confusion would happen with the users. And I just want to give a minute maybe for you to figure out, like, how can you improve this experience here that you're seeing in this Jeff in front of you? As you probably predicted, like later on, Google ended up having a better integration uh, to the tool across their software or suite of software. A better integration in Java, but also when Gemini specifically detects an email, for example, describing an event, it displays an add to the calendar button on the top. So it doesn't affect or stop the experience, but also enhance it. And you can do it right away from the email. Another thing as well that they added later on or capabilities or feature that was on uh, the edit button that was added later. Uh, in the first one, if you remember, there was no edit button so you couldn't really edit the calendar invite until you go back to the calendar but now uh, there's an edit button you can edit it on the spot from the gemini uh, panel as well as a thumbs down and thumbs up that really uh, help the user to get feedback on the experiences and how good the suggestion was or not so in the lesson from this example that i would like to share ai should augment and not dictate for the user. Another good example here related to healthcare. Picture Health, it's a dermatology uh, diagnosis tool. When the first came out with their first iteration, again, the user was not happy. In this case, were physicians. They don't understand how the prediction happened and they didn't really have the trust uh, if the diagnosis actually was accurate or not. Simply, later on, the team added uh, a heat map basically to show how the model predicted the uh, healthy skin versus disease skin and showed that back to the user or the physician at this time. And uh, this heat map was something very small to be added, but it helped a lot to build this credibility and build the trust with the physician of the diagnosis. Trust is a future, not a bonus. This is very important and trust should be a future in your software and not a bonus. Another example, is Netflix. Specifically, the recommending system features. Netflix is famously uh, one of the first ones that adapted it and introduced it to the industry. But again, it had a little bit of faults at the beginning of it. Another improvement that I think is really good and important to highlight is also creating the platform to be hyper-personalized. If you're 
most of us have family members that use our Netflix. So if you have your mom, your sister, your brother, they may see the same exact show thumbnails or maybe different depends on their graphics and their personalization. So something to remember, personalization does not or should not equal limitation. So how our role is evolving in designing and building and developing for AI. As you probably already know and prepared, there's prompt engineering and interaction shaping skills that we need to focus on and adapt into our life. And we're already doing so. Behavioral modeling and data intuition, that's something also I would say is going to come into more fruition as we design and dive deeper into finding ideas and developing for AI software. Working with models, not just pixels, which is, we know how pixels are important, but as I mentioned earlier, we can come to a place that we're already close to that we may not even use screens anymore to interact and behave with the world around us and anticipating ethical implications early on. I think as people who are, um, as designers and a creative people specifically, I would say we have been trying to put ourselves into the user's shoes for many years now. And I think we have a good um, place for us to bring that into the AI world and think about the ethical implication as we designing our experiences. And one of the things that I'm very passionate about myself is also having more founders from design background. We need more founders from design background, more people who know how to shape experiences, how to design software, how to capture people, interactions and heart with creativity. And I believe there is a huge opportunity now with the AI to bring that in into fruition. And a lot of designers and creative people have the opportunity now to become founders of tech, use software that is already exist to build their prototype or to build even their beta and come to the market. And that's something that I was mentioning earlier as in, at Indie Pixels Venture Studio, that's something we can help you with for sure as we are building our own ideas, but also um, supporting, consulting and advising, and most importantly, investing in startup that we think that they are uh, trying to build something with social impact, as well as something that is not traditionally available in the software. And of course, with a focus on enterprise, SaaS and AI. And if you want to learn more about that, please check out our website, indiepixel.co. Right at the moment, uh, we are building a few ideas or working on a few ideas, but soon we'll be able to actually uh, write checks for our startups. We are launched um, our tech fund that is focused on early stage startups, and we're still raising money for it, but soon we'll be able to actually write your first paycheck, but also guide you through building and designing software um, and your startup basically, and help you to get your idea from a napkin uh, sketch into fruition, also get you in front of uh, VCs and investment, if that's the route you would like to go to. So please, you know, feel free to check out our website again, indiepixel.co. Share your opinion, follow us on social media, and more to come on that and more details, of course, will be out soon. So I know I've been talking for a while now, so there is a few takeaways that I would like you to take out of this video or talk is UX design has a powerful role in shaping human-machine relationship. And as tech professional and design professional, we have a responsibility to be a part of this powerful shaping of it. Also, AI demands a new design mindset with a false on transparency, adaptability, and also ethical implications. We need to keep the mindset in our mind as we're designing experiences for the greater good of human experiences. And one last thing would say will be that your job is to give people agency and not necessarily just give them interfaces or override their experiences. And lastly, and it's one of the most important takeaway that I would like you to take today, human-centered AI or UX for AI, it starts and ends with human-centered design. And that's not gonna change no matter who will tell you otherwise. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.